Vice President Harris, in a speech at the Munich Security Conference on Saturday, sought to convey total unity among the United States and its allies in imposing harsh sanctions on Russia should it choose to invade Ukraine. Harris told the conference that U.S. support for the NATO alliance is sacrosanct. Sacrosanct, excuse me. I, I'd never hear anybody use that word. And pledged that Russia would face unprecedented economic penalties in the event of an invasion. Let me be clear, I can say with absolute certainty, if Russia further invades Ukraine, the United States, together with our allies and partners, will impose significant and unprecedented economic costs, Harris said in prepared remarks. The imposition of these sweeping and coordinated measures will inflict great damage on those who must be held accountable. Harris's speech at the annual security conference came at a critical and perilous moment as Russia appears on the brink of invading Ukraine. President Biden said Friday evening that he is convinced Russian President Vladimir Putin has made up his mind to invade Ukraine and that the U.S. believes Ukraine's capital of Kyiv is a likely target in the coming days. The U.S. estimates Russia has between 169,000 and 190,000 troops close to or in Ukraine. At the same time, the U.S. says it is not shutting the door to diplomacy to defuse the crisis. Harris said Saturday that the U.S. and its European allies remain open to re resolving the crisis through diplomacy while being prepared to penalize Russia in the event of an incursion. So, I always remember um, when Mike Gravel was running for president a few years ago and how there was a segment he did with, uh, I think it was Graham Elwood, I'm, I'm not entirely sure who it was, but I know I made a video about it, and where he talked about how um, sanctions that are imposed on various countries, so if the U.S. imposes sanctions on Russians, for example, on Russia, for example, it's more likely to affect regular Russian civilians than Putin or anyone else that is in control of the government. Um, and this was the same practice where we were threatening to impose sanctions on Venezuela and the Venezuelan people were the ones that were impacted the most by it. So it, but it's really interesting because there was a discussion about how sanctions are like an economic war, you know, like, oh, we're going to hurt the living conditions of the people that live in this country who have no control over what the sometimes insane people who run their government decide to do um and it'll it'll look better than a full-out war because you know people won't turn on the tv and see caskets and hear about this person died or that person died even though it's going to still have devastating impacts uh toward regular civilians it's really sad too because this is all about the u.s wanting to stick itself in something that has nothing to do with it, which is usually how we get involved in these forever wars. Um, and unfortunately, you have a lot of Americans that don't understand what sanctions do to these countries that have them imposed on them. You know, like, it, it, you, you do have people who think, oh, yeah, they're showing Putin. Like, no, Putin won't miss a meal. Putin won't have a hard time getting reelected. He's He's set. The only people getting hurt by these sanctions that we're imposing, you know, in the event that Ukraine is invaded by Russia, are Russian civilians. So, it, I, I understand fully why they want to, you know, get together and impose these, these things because it looks better on paper than actually sending troops over there and starting a, you know, physical conflict. So we start an economic one where we punish the people that live in whatever country we put sanctions on to uh, get back at their government. It's, it, it's a really insane practice.